What's up, Wildlings? The Wild CEO here. Canola oil, is it good? Is it bad? Is it healthy? Is it unhealthy? This oil is one of the most widely used oils in commercial kitchens in this country. It's also in a lot of processed and refined foods. Knowing whether it's good for you or not is probably something everybody should be accounting for. Let's get to it. There's a recent study of Alzheimer's patients that suggests that canola consumption can the effects of Alzheimer's. This is a legit study that has come out recently that is really, really bad news bears for canola. But of course, like who's gonna talk about it or or, or who's gonna spread the awareness of that, you know? And, and again, like you don't really need the research to tell you that. Like you can just look at what this vegetable plant oil is. You can look at how it's made, which we're about to get to, and you can make some pretty common sense suggestions for yourself. Let's talk about how it's made and some of the other issues with it. The number one issue with canola is it is almost all GMO. All crop of, gra of rapeseed in the United States is nearly all GMO. Now, some people might tell you GMO is safe. Some might say it's not. My personal opinion is that if we need to use GMO to feed people that are starving, we should be doing that. But we don't know what the long-term implications of GMO are. And anytime humans have intervened in nature, we have messed things up. So I don't trust big private corporation scientists that are trying to make a buck and a profit with GMO anything. That's just the way it is. I would not take that risk with my kids or my own health, and I don't think you should do it either with yours. So number two with canola oil, it is highly, highly refined and processed. I mean, the way you make this stuff is like making an industrial freaking chemical product. Like, let's, let's just go into this real quick. All right, the first thing, there's about seven steps here. Seed cleaning. It gets separated and cleaned to remove impurities such as plant stalks and dirt, okay, seems standard. Seed conditioning and flaking. Seeds are preheated to about 95 degrees, then flaked by roller mills to rupture the cell wall of the seed. Number three, seed cooking. The seed flakes are cooked by a series of steam heated cookers. Typically this process lasts 10 to 20 minutes at 176 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Number four, pressing. Next, the cooked canola seed flakes are pressed in a series of screw pressers and expellers the action removes 50 to 60% of the oil from the flakes, leaving the rest to be extracted by other means. <laughs> They're not even done yet. They can't even get the oil out at that point. They still gotta go further. Five, solvent extraction. Solvent extraction in a food product. The remaining seed flakes containing 18 to 20% oil are further broken down using chemical hexane. Wow. Yeah, and hexane, uh, you might wanna look it up, but it's bad news bears. Oh, they're not done. Number six. Desolventizing. Desolventizing. The hexane is then stripped from the canola meal by hitting it a third time at 200 to 240 degrees Fahrenheit through steam exposure. And then number seven, processing the oil. The extracted oil is refined by varying methods such as steam, distillation, exposure to phosphoric acid, and filtration through acid activated clays. Like, what the hell? This is food? Are you freaking kidding me? That should scare the hell out of you. The fact that canola oil is one of the most widely used oils in restaurant and processed food cooking and, and ingredients and, and, and products should really be a pause for concern. Or a cause for concern? Is it a pause for concern? For all of us. It's one of those reasons that restaurant food is not healthy and it never will be. Canola is also turned into margarine through a process known as hydrogenation, a further process in which molecules of hydrogen are pumped into the oil to change this chemical structure. I'm sure you've heard of partially hydrogenated vegetable oil or fat or whatever. Like my understanding is that's pretty much trans fat and that is very, very bad, very bad. That is just how it's made. Oh, there's more. Canola, as we've shown, has increased potential for causing brain issues and for being pro-inflammatory, all right? And there's quite a few studies here relating to oxidative stress that cause an imbalance between harmful free radicals, which can cause inflammation, et cetera. Uh, I'm gonna link to all these below so you can look into those if you want to. And a couple other research studies done on the health and consuming, including overweight and obese participants who use canola oil for cooking were more likely to have metabolic syndrome than those that rarely used it. That's probably a survey-based survey study and you know how I feel about those, but still. It's also important to note that many of the studies that suggest that canola is heart healthy, a lot of that is based on really bad epidemiological research and a lot of the, the correlation-based research that should not be called research at all. I mean, they literally email somebody or they or they send in the mail a questionnaire and you, you answer these, these questions of like what you eat have eaten in the past year and then they're gonna then try to draw conclusions from that. It's it's asinine that that's allowed, but it is. It's allowed and it's a lot of, a lot of that research is what has funded 
the food companies and the policy that our government has put out and th places like the FDA and the American Heart Association follow this nonsense and it's really bad. It's really bad. Well, so what about the benefits? I mean, I think you're hard pressed to find benefits. It's a flavorless oil, it's moderate to high heat, but aside from that, I think you gotta be very careful about consuming canola oil. And, and, and if I had to choose, and if I had to choose for you, I would say don't consume it at all, right? You're better off with a million other options. And you can watch my other video here, or maybe is it here? The card right there. That's the top five healthy cooking oils, my favorite cooking fats. You can, you can click that right there to watch that. And I'm gonna give you plenty of other alternatives that not only taste better, but are better for you, are better for the environment, better for your health. You don't need canola oil. And I think we've established that canola oil is not a healthy oil, especially if you're trying to say that because it has low saturated fat, it's gonna be healthy. That has been disproven at this point. That is old thinking dogma around fat. That is basically the lipid hypothesis that has been destroyed by people like Gary Taubes with his book. And so we don't need to go there. The vote on canola is down. Don't eat it, don't buy it, don't feed your family and avoid it out of restaurants. Eat at home as much as possible. Cook your own food using really good oils. And I hope that video was useful. I hope you now will avoid canola oil to the best of your ability. And at the very least, you're a little bit more aware of canola and how it's made and how it might not be good for you. Or I would say it isn't good for you. It's pretty well established at this point based on all the data we have. And I just hope you'll take this information and use it to make better decisions in your life and in your family's life and how you're eating food and consuming it and cooking it. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to get more videos like this. And I will see you in the next one.